Okay, Revolution Golfers, it's time now for a little mental gymnastics. What I'm going to take you through here is the explanation of the D-plane, which was figured out by Theodore Jorgensen in the physics of golf. This is extremely important for you to understand because it's going to really help you understand why the ball's doing what it's doing, and it'll even help you to understand what you're seeing on the PGA Tour. When I was 13, I went to the Canadian Open in, in Oakville, Ontario, where I lived, and I stood on the third tee for seven groups, so 21 players went by. And what was fascinating to me was that all the guys hitting the ball dead straight, their divot was pointed left. And I said to my dad, you know, these guys are coming over the top, but the ball's going straight. And so we just figured they just had a lot of talent, and that's why that was happening. But then I saw something with one player whose divot was at the target, and his ball hooked into the left bunker. And that got me thinking. And it was not something I came back to until about 1994 when I read this chapter on this thing called the divergence plane. So not to be wordy or confusing, but this is really important that you understand. If you look at some of my players on tour when they're playing, you'll notice as they're rehearsing their swing from down the line, as they're rehearsing their swing, you can see that the exit of the club is very left and around them. Now this is referred to coming over the top but it's an incorrect way to explain it. If we look here, you'll notice that this is the incline plane. So what this yellow board does is representing the angle of the shaft. That is when we're discussing plane, this is what we're discussing. Now, if I take this and move it to the right, that's showing that the movement of the club through the ball is from in to out. So that's a path to the right. If I move this this way, it's now showing that the club is moving out to in. That's a path to the left. So as we've spoke about before, in order to hit the ball dead straight, I need the path moving at zero at impact. So the path is moving perpendicular to the target line at impact. And the position of the club face is zero as well. So the only way to hit the ball straight, not spin the, get the spin axis tilted left to the left or right, is both the face and path have to be zero. And that's very difficult to create. So when we're looking at those divots that those players had going to the left, the reason that they were swinging left to hit the ball straight is because from in front you can see that if I lean the shaft, how a good player looks at impact, from down the line you'll notice that this, this red stick here, which is showing us the path of the sweet spot through the ball, it's now moved to the right. But if you're looking here at the swing direction at this point, isn't in to out or out to in. It's just coming from inside to square for a moment and then back to the inside. So if I'm hitting down on the golf ball from in square to in, I'm going to be able to produce a path draw. So the reason that the ball is going to draw is if the path is five to the right, but the face is two degrees to the right, then the face is three degrees close to the path. As it's coming through the object, at the point of friction, tilt the spin axis of the ball, and the ball curves from right to left. So much like a plane, the spin axis tilted this way, and that's why the ball's moving from right to left. Now, if I wanted to hit the ball straight from here, in order to, hit to get the ball straight, I one have to get deliver the face at zero, but I also have to get the path at zero. So if I'm hitting down on it, taking a divot, I've got to move my swing direction from in square to in to slightly out to in. So as you'll see in the representation, the path is now going straight down the target line. And that's the explanation for why you see the pros swinging to the left in order to hit the ball straight. And it also gives us the ability to not pay attention to trying to swing down the target line because if I'm swinging down the target line and I'm hitting down on the ball, those are going to be two things that's going to move the path way out to the right and I'm going to struggle with pushes to the right and also hooks to the left. Now, the opposite is true if I'm hitting up on the ball. So if you've ever seen pictures of Roy McIlroy in his downswing, the club looks like it's stuck behind him and that he's moving in to out too much, but he's still hitting the ball straight. Because now, if I keep my in square to in in my swing direction, so my swing direction's at zero, if I now start hitting up on the ball, so I've got past the low point of the arc at this point, the club is now starting to work back and back in and up the plane, you can see now that the path is pointed quite a bit to the left. 
So in order to get the path pointed straight, I now have to be able to swing into out to do that. So it's really not as just simple as it sounds, but it's just to give you the awareness that if you're hitting up on the golf ball and you're trying to hit it straight, you have to make sure that you're swinging a little bit more to first base. If you're hitting down on the golf ball with some steepness and taking a divot, you have to feel like the movement through the shot is at the second baseman where they stand in the major, or at the shortstop where they stand in the major leagues. So hopefully you understanding the D plane and looking deeper into it, and I'd advise you to go online onto YouTube and look up a video by my friend named James Lights who designed this, and it's called the, it's called the impact, it's called the impact plane as designed by James Lights. But this is gonna give you a much better understanding of why your ball is doing what it's doing in the air.